All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at how to use the Casio FX 9750G2 to work with complex numbers. Okay, this is a video response to a comment I received. And the question is, how do we get this particular calculator to take a problem like square root of negative 4 and display the answer as 2i because the square root of 4 is 2 and when you square root negatives that makes the answer complex so we need somehow if this calculator is capable we need to get it to be able to uh, give answers in terms of i so if we start with the calculator uh, and I, what I did is I reset the calculator to factory spec so this is as if it came out of the package brand new Notice that right above the x squared button is the square root. And if you're wondering how did I get here, if you hit the menu button, that's going to be the run uh, option here, run dash math, and you hit execute to get to the screen where you actually calculate, okay? So here you can do stuff like 9 times 9 and get answers okay so what we want to do is we want to do square root of that's going to be shift square root and negative now here's your negative button that's different than the subtraction key negative four execute and you'll see that it says non-real error so is it possible to have this calculator display complex solutions? So, well, the answer is yes. So if we hit clear in this uh, mode, in this, uh, what is say, in this menu option, if you go to setup, shift, and menu, and scroll down here to the bottom, see where it says complex mode? You want to set that, instead of real, you want it to be complex mode. Now, this calculator is kind of weird. These line up with the function keys, okay? So real is F1, A plus BI is F2, and this R theta is F3. We want complex mode, so we're going to hit F2, and then that changes it to complex mode. And there are lots of other settings we can change, okay? But now that we've changed that to complex mode, let's exit. And now if we hit execute, now it's going to give us the answer in terms of I, okay? Now if I stop there, I think I would be cheating you out of some learning. So let's go ahead and look at what if you wanted to work with the complex number, okay? Let's say that you wanted to take 2I times 5 minus 7i. Let's say that you want to multiply complex numbers, okay? As long as you're in complex mode here, you can go ahead and input this in your calculator, 2, and then notice right above 0 in yellow, you've got your i. So that is shift and 0 for i, parentheses, 5 minus 7 and i. And close parentheses and execute and that is going to actually now work with complex numbers okay and if we did that by hand just to show you that the calculator is given the right answer 2i times 5 is 10i 2 times negative 7 is negative 14 notice i times i gives me an i squared and if you're working with complex numbers, you were probably told that I squared is the same as negative 1. So what we can do is we can replace I squared with negative 1. That is indicated multiplication. Negative times a negative makes a positive. And then I want you to notice that the calculator does give the answer in standard form. Standard form is A plus B I form. And so what the calculator is doing is it's taking this answer and it's flipping these around so that it's in standard form, okay? And probably the coolest thing about having a calculator that does this for you is if you have two complex numbers that have both a real and an imaginary part. For example, if you have 2 minus 3i times 5 
plus 7i, this would require the FOIL method and combine like terms and replace i squared. There's a lot of junk going on, but with the calculator, you can simply type in the problem the way it looks, 2 minus 3i uh, times 5 plus 7i. And the calculator is going to do the FOIL method, combine like terms, replace the I squared with negative 1. It's going to simplify it for you, do all the work, okay? So even if you have to show your work, the calculator is still a nice tool to check your work, okay? And like I said, I'm, I like to do lots of examples. So let's say that we have one more example. Let's say that you had to do the square root of let's say negative 75. Now this would require that you know how to simplify radical expressions. The 75 doesn't square root nicely, but you would have to know how to break it down. And this makes it complex. And again, the calculator makes this super easy. If we do shift square root, uh, negative 75, and the calculator is going to, oops, my bad dog, the calculator is not going to give it in radical form. I'm so sorry. This particular calculator uh, is not going to be able to display this in simplest radical form. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, square root of 75 is 25 times negative 3 makes negative 75. And the square root of 25 is 5. A negative makes that an I, and then the 3 doesn't square root. So this would be 5 square root of 3I in radical form. And I do just so happen to have my other Casio class whiz pulled up here to show you what I'm talking about. On this calculator, if you do square root of negative 75, uh, math error. So what I need to do here is I need to go to menu complex. I need to select complex and then try it. Negative 75. Look at that. 5 square root of 3i. This particular calculator, the Casio FX991EX class whiz, writes that complex number in simplest radical form where the FX9750G2 doesn't have that capability, okay? That's just another reason why I prefer the class whiz over even these calculators that are graphing models. This is just a nice calculator. Man, so much stuff to go over just for a simple question here. So I hope all of that was helpful. If you have any other questions or comments, please put those in the comment section below. Uh, and thanks for watching.